Ace here, and today we're starting a brand new Let's Play. This is Grey Wolf, Hunter of the North Atlantic. Now, I know some of you want to see me finish my Let's Play of Ion Fury, and I will be getting to that. However, since it's April Fool's Day, I figured why not give this game a try. By the way, it's a submarine simulator that came out from 1994. However, it's so utterly obscure and rare a game that not only has no one ever done a full Let's Play of it before, but there doesn't appear to even be any footage of it actually being played on YouTube. The most you'll see is some still images, which are probably from the box art even. But anyways, let's dive in. No pun intended. You head for the North Atlantic. By the way, I should mention that because this game came out in 1994, it's not only a pre-DirectX game, but it also requires Windows 3.1, or that's what it was made for. So to actually get this thing running, I've had to actually use a special version of DOSBox with Windows 3.1 installed on it. Anyways, let's go ahead and get an assignment. Hopefully we can get one that is both uh, transports and destroyers. Well, I'll just keep doing this until I get one. Here we go. Yeah, it kind of it does rely on RNGesus to really get through, but I really wanted to show you the combination of, well, both destroyers and the transports. Now, the destroyers are at the yellow dots here, well, the yellow dot here because it's for just one. And the transports are, of course, the three whites, and we're the red dot, the submarine. Now, we'll go ahead and get our uh, settings proper. All right, so we are rising up. Cutscene is gonna play. Now, for 1994, these are pretty decent graphics, I have to be honest. All right, so we definitely see him, but we're not sure how far away he is, so we'll find out real quick. All right, so he's... Now the AI, okay, so the game does have a few issues I do need to mention. The AI can be rather simplistic, and a good example of this is the fact that, well, the destroyer is just going to sail right towards you, and the escorts are just going to go in a straight direction. Now, that's a bit of an issue, and as you can probably tell for obvious reasons, this is not a very complex game at all. Of course, you could probably already tell that in comparison to games like the old Silent Hunter games. But it does at least have a few things going for it given the time, like the graphics are at least decent. Um, I think this might have actually been a budget game, in all honesty. It is not a perfect game by any stretch, but... Let's go ahead and go to a head full, because why not? Because I do want to get this particular ship sunk as quickly as possible. So we can then focus on the transports. Uh, there are... One of the issues, by the way, that I do need to mention with this game, aside from the AI, is the fact that there's also no deck gun available to you, even though this is a Type 7 U-boat you're in control of, so you should be able to use it. We're actually close enough now. We should be able to actually... This is another thing, too. The maximum range for your torpedoes is... We destroyed the destroyer, which is nice. But yeah, the maximum range is 5,000 meters, which is quite a long range for World War II. I mean, from what I've read, you're looking historically, 3,000 range would be long range for the, the time period, anyways. Or yeah, 3,000 yards, anyways. So I do like, however, that the, they actually do have the interior of the submarine model. That is pretty impressive given the time period. And the graphics themselves, like I said, are kind of good for the time period as well. But as you could probably tell, that's another issue I'm going to have to bring up is the fact that... Okay, we'll go ahead and surface. Go to full speed. Another issue, like I said, was the fact that you don't have to even lead the target, which is a bit of an issue. 
And like I said, AI is for the transports is just not changing the direction or anything. So we'll be able to just get right up to them. No problems. As long as we have enough fuel. Let's see about that. We're at about 50% fuel, which is good. No, we want to stay surfaced. But yeah, like I said, no one's ever done a full Let's Play of it. So we'll just get close enough to take out this guy and we should be good to go. Then we'll go over to this guy, take him out real quick, and then finish off with this guy. It looks like this is the biggest freighter, too, of the three, so. But it is a very simplistic game, as you could probably tell. And that's kind of the big issue with it, in my opinion. But if this was a budget game like I'm suspecting it might be for, say, 10 or $15, then, yeah, given the time period that it came out, it might actually have been somewhat acceptable. All right, so we just took out a ship, so an animation is going to play with that. Nice. What is our fuel situation looking like? Twenty five percent. We are in a spot. We need to get to this guy really quick and then we need to get to the other guy. Now, it might actually be that the game is a little bit bugged in that um, it doesn't actually keep track of how much fuel you have left. I'm not entirely sure or it might just ignore that. So we'll go ahead and actually set this feet to uh, flank, even though we are kind of low on fuel. Seventeen knots ought to get us right where we need to be, though. Then once we get this ship taken care of, we can go to the other one, hopefully. But yeah, it is heavily determined by RNGs, like I said, so what you get, and it changes every single time. So that is kind of the replay factor for this game and kind of the one saving grace aside from the graphics I can think of. And maybe the price if it had come out relatively cheap. I know it's cheap and easy to acquire these days. Well, kind of. I mean, you can get it cheap enough, but... Okay, so we are about 800 yards away from 700... So we'll be able to take out this guy real quick and then maybe if we have just enough fuel make a quick rush over to the other one and take him out because so I want to get that done while we still have a chance okay I'd say we're close enough now All right, now the good news is also the game pauses when these cutscenes play. So we'll go ahead and head back onto this. So let's see if it is actually bugged like I'm suspecting it might be. Yep. So yeah, that is Another bug with the game is that the fuel is technically limited, but, or is supposed to be limited, but you can still go flank speed as long as you're, I guess, don't change the speed while you're out of fuel. But yeah, once we get within range with this guy, we'll be able to take him out and then we'll be able to finish the mission. And since all the missions basically play out this way, whether you win or lose, 
this will essentially have been a full let's play because that's really all there is to the game which is kind of a, another big issue with it in my opinion is that aside from this there's nothing else really um i mean it does change every single time so it's one strength you could argue is also one of the bigger problems with it too anyways now there is a program another way to get this game running i should mention uh i found there is a program I found that actually allows you to run 16-bit programs, which this is. But the problem is that program does not seem to be able to limit frame rate on its own. And so trying to play this game on modern hardware, just using it, and you can't, by the way, use any other a wrapper because this is pre-DirectX, this game. So because of that, and because I don't really have a way of controlling the frame rate, otherwise it just goes completely bonkers. <laughs> runs way too fast which is a bit of a problem in the torpedoes oh by the way that is another issue i need to bring up so when you're in the periscope you actually if you try you have you have the ability to move both the submarine and the periscope itself the submarine together or the periscope separately but if you aim the periscope uh, just slightly off the bow or slightly off uh, the front of the ship you won't actually be able to actually even fire. Now that is something that is actually historically inaccurate. The Type 7 U-boats, the torpedoes, you could fire at quite an angle off the bow. So it's a really weird decision to even have that uh, feature or limitation within it. I don't know why they put it in, but yeah. So we are getting close. 1500 more meters and once we get to that we'll be able to actually finish off this guy we'll be able to finish off the mission okay now it's less than a thousand meters all right then I'll be able to show you the after missions uh, screen so I think we're close enough now. And we beat it. Uh, we beat this particular patrol anyways. So we were able to make it back, even though we are completely out of fuel, as I'm sure you all are well aware. Victory for U-Boat Crew, which is the U-96, which I'm pretty sure was actually, if I remember correctly, I thought the U-96 was a U-9 class or a Type 9 class. I don't think it was a Type 7. That's the thing. I think the U-96 was a Type 9, which not only was a long-range ocean-going submarine class, but now go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but not only was the Type 9 a long-range ocean-going craft, or submarine, but it also had a much bigger deck gun, even uh, 105, if I remember correctly, instead of the 88. So, and more torpedoes as well, and stuff like that. Um, anyways, so let's go ahead and continue. And we sunk quite a few tons out of it, so yeah. But yeah, that, anyways, that's the entire game, more or less. Um, you can get different missions depending on what RNG Jesus throws you, but that's the game in a nutshell. For five or 10 bucks, or maybe, or for 10 or 15 bucks at 1994 time, it might've been acceptable. I mean, there were hunting games still around that kind of were same similar idea to this. So having a U-boat themed thing similar to that, I could understand it, but it, ex yeah, it's just doesn't exactly have a lot to it. And that's kind of the biggest problem. But anyways, it is still a relatively obscure game. I think it is important to look at games, even the obscure ones that didn't necessarily work out that well. So that's part of the reason why I decided to cover it. But anyways, this has been Ace. Hope to see you guys again soon. Take care. Ace out.